Alright, people, welcome back to the show. You're now tuned to CFRE 91.9 FM. It's your man, DM Cool. You're not tuned to Cool Radio. You already know what it is. I got my man, Jay Kareem, with me. What up, what up, what up? Mm. You good? You're good, y'all. Please tell me you're not thirsting for our guests right now. Oh, God. Relax, relax, relax. I know that Kyrie was a little bit around. Yo, Kay, Kay. Don't put that on me, Kay. Kay. Don't put that on me. Rest us with your voice, please. I need to hear some femininity right now, yeah? But Danny, you were just hearing some femininity. Ah, uh, not that kind. Not that kind. I don't want that kind. Ask to see about that shit. Oh, Ooh. shit. Anyways, without further ado, we got a special guest in the building right now in our presence. He was here before when our show was renamed something else, but now that we you know we've revamped things here and there, he's here in the flesh in the booth right now. This man goes by the name of Shaka. Shaka, welcome to the show. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. You mm -hmm. already know, man. Yeah. Now, yeah. <laughs> little shot. Talking man. about me, but it's got <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, <that's> <laughs> <laughs> Alright man, so you know we always ask you know each every rapper who comes in here how they got the name. So we gotta know how was Shaka born? Mm. Shaka was born through I would say just growing up close through growing up, uh, just the name that sort of stuck with me to be honest, it came it started with Shell Shocker. I was a little kid running around the streets, they just called me Shell Shocker. Yeah. When I got into music, songwriting and all that, it was young shock, everyone had their young, their little. Yeah. And then, <laughs> as I grew as an artist, I just dropped the young and it's it's not just shocker. So that's the stuff, that's up. Now with people who are educated about your music, you know, mm -hmm. what what uh what style, you know, what style has inspired mm -hmm. you to create your own? Like who the who are the artists that you looked up to? Oh, I hate this question. I know, right? <laughs> Uh, but I listen to a lot of, and I look up to a lot of artists such as Joe Budden. Mm -hmm. Music that's very thought provoked and it sends a message at the end of the day. So you're fabulous, mm -hmm. you're Kanye. I can get arrogant sometimes, but it's, it's thought provoked music that has a message, and at the end of the day, it makes sense. It's not no, no I, don't, I don't do that cookie cut music. It's, yeah, it's, it's yeah, real music. It's real yeah, music. no jigaboo music. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> that's why we got you here, man. We really got the realist you know. it. You already know, man. So, you know, when, when was the first time you, know, you picked up the pen and the pad, bro? Uh, I would say in high school. Probably around grade nine, grade nine, ten. I picked it up. I was trying, trying to ting. Yeah, I know, right? And, uh, it, it went somewhere. Yeah. And not only did I see it go somewhere, the people around me saw it, and they're like, "You should, you should keep doing this." So mm -hmm. I had my little mic. When I first started, I had a little setup at home, mm -hmm. mic stand, just like that. And man's were like, "You sit down and rap." I was like, "Yeah, I was yeah. sitting down and rapping, you know." But yeah. took it from there to putting money together, building my own studio, and yeah. now it's. What I want to yeah, do. Speaking which, uh, yeah, speaking of which, uh, you have your own studio, and yeah. so you decided to take the engineer route, man. What, yeah. what made you do that? Uh, there are so many different avenues, and there are so many that I could cover. Uh -huh. like, producing, I tried that, and it's it is not for me, man. So I was like, yeah. you know what? If I can pick up another craft and cut everything in half, because it's financially, it's money you got to come up with. So mm -hmm. just took some classes, did some reading. YouTube's everyone's best friend, and I had a couple friends with the Metalworks, blessed to them. Mm -hmm. Taught me a thing or two, and I engineer my own music now, so. That's what's up, that's what's up. Now, um, you were part of a, I don't want to call it an like organization, but you're a private group, let's just say you're a private group, mm -hmm. called uh, the Remix Project. Man, it's all in the Illuminati. Yeah. <laughs> the group. Secret Society. <laughs> but yeah, uh, tell us what the <laughs> Remix Project is all about. It's all about taking youth, they have an age group, but it's all about taking youth off of the street, whether you're a music artist, songwriter, engineer, they have their different fields with their creative arts. Mm -hmm. And they just they just they just they just mold your craft and they bring it from wherever you started to a next level. Yeah. They connect you with the right people, they put you in the right rooms, there's a lot of resources, they get you all about your networking and then you have a mentor mm -hmm. and then from there you just sort of grow and develop in whatever it is your stream is, whether you're a music artist, mm -hmm. producer, there's tons of graphic designers that some, the, some of the work I've seen in, in, in that building from people, it's just when you go there, yeah. you're just in your own space and everybody just, everyone just connects, you're all fam. And it's, yeah. people say fam, is really fam. Yeah. You go there and it's like, yo, this is home. So it was dope. And I, I, I'll tell this day, I still go check in. Mm -hmm. You're welcome back after you graduated and you're an alumni. And I mean, mm -hmm. just come true and just, just chill. You don't have to do nothing. You just sit there and just, just hang out. Just, exactly, just, just, just knock out. Yeah. That's crazy. Uh, so what initially made you want to become part of the, the remix group? Uh, I heard about it through a good friend of mine, and when I had applied, uh, that's when they had changed your email address. So I'm like, I can't wait, I can't wait. It didn't even go nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> I had to wait till the next round. I applied again, and then they had this little room set up. You got to come through audition, and I'm like, mm -hmm. oh shit. So you do, you rap your one, two songs, play some of your music. Um, it was an it was an advancement move for me in terms of opportunities, and not a lot of people really know about it, but it's a good program to get involved with, and. From the friend told me about it, I tried it out and it actually worked for me and uh, in terms of connecting with people it is a lot easier because people may not show you that love or they may not want to listen to your music but when they hear, oh you're a remix, oh yeah I'll listen to your music so it's 
it's a great program, and I, I'd uh, recommend it to anybody for sure. Yeah. Now, uh, there's uh, there's been quite a few uh, big names, you know, Toronto, you know, based that have been uh, linked up to it. Yeah. Uh, there's been like Boy Wonder mm -hmm. and uh, Melanie Fiona has been linked to it as well yeah. too. So, like, how did that make you feel? Like, did it give you like reassurance that what you're doing is like the right thing to do as far as remix group goes? Uh, I guess you could say that. Yeah, it gave me reassurance as well as. It gave me a chance to be in a room with people who I've experienced mm -hmm. to help mold my craft. So if they see what I'm doing is great, shock, I love what you do, or maybe you can change this. And you're getting opinions from people who have the knowledge, who have the understanding. So mm -hmm. it, 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 it's definitely great when people who have gone somewhere mm -hmm. come from there. It's, it's, it's a great vibe, like you said, boy, one of the rich kid, all of them. So mm -hmm. it's crazy. Yeah, and how's that helped with your with your networking as well, too? Uh, I, yeah, I make it. it it's. I don't want to say it makes it a lot easier, but they now have like a, a list of whenever they have events or they'll just call everyone through, a remix alumni come through, so if they're ever having like artists come by, whatever the case is, I just go and just bring, symbols bring in your CDs, you got to do your own networking, they've, mm -hmm. they've done as much as put you in the room, you now do your own thing. Word, word. So. Now, being a rapper in Toronto, you know, you know, I know we've talked about this in the past before, the minute you tell someone, you know, in the city that you're a rapper, mm -hmm. They automatically just turn sour in the face. So, like, why do you think there's such a, a stigma uh, with being a rapper from the city? To be honest with you, I stopped using that word. I, I'm a music artist. Thank you. Thank I, you. I, I make music. I, I music agree. Artist, songwriter, and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just had to do the same um, thing, too. <laughs> I don't know. There's people here that name rapper that always just, yeah. just another one of those. Yeah. You should actually give the artist a chance to at least listen to their music. Mm -hmm. I don't like to do too much talking. I just play the music. Mm -hmm. When people hear it, yo, this shit's dope. Yeah. Well, if you fuck with it, can I just run the radio? If you fuck with it, you fuck with it. So give it a chance and don't don't judge me. I say I'm a rapper, give the music a chance. Let the music do the talking, right? Exactly. So that's what I mean. Yeah. And uh, how would you uh, describe like the majority of your music actually? Uh, I like to use the word thought for folk. I'm, I'm, I'm in the process of working on a new EP. Okay. I've just been doing a lot of writing. Whether it makes the cut or not, I'm just trying to put together a catalog of music, mm -hmm. sit down with the team and sort of just cut through what we like, what we don't like, build up pre-singles and just build some anticipation for the next project that knows no set dates yet, but mm -hmm. we're working. Uh, we working, okay. <laughs> Actually, speaking of which, Joe, tell us about that slogan because you got me saying that for like the third or fourth time, man. I don't know, man. I used to, my managers were all about film and footage and get as much stuff out as you can. It's one thing to say, I'm working on music, tweeting it, but if they mm -hmm. can actually see what you're doing, yeah. The outsiders and the listeners that follow you can connect with you. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, you know, that's a good idea. So I got a camera, yeah. set it up in the studio, and one of my producers, shout out to Francis, by the way. Yeah. Um, Francis got hit. <laughs> we were recording him making a beat, and it was just crazy. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, yo, we're working. Like, I'm, re Remix is like, it, it's home again, like I said. So if I wasn't at work, if I wasn't at home, I was there. Mm -hmm. And that's all I did. So from 2 o'clock to 8 o'clock, you can see me there. So mm -hmm. we working just came off of that, and then other people started saying it, and I'm like, shit, this is mine now. If other people are vibing off of this, shot me video, we work it on. Yo, that's why I'm here, you know what I mean? So, yeah. that's kind of where it came from, just in the studio all the time, no matter what, man. Whether it's my stuff we're working on, or other artists, I'm always there. That's what's so, up. Now, uh, last year, um, you put out a project called My Thoughts, My Reality. So, uh, so what was the, uh, the concept behind that? <sighs> the concept behind it, I don't know if you guys have seen the cover art, it's like a... A picture side view of me, I wish I brought with my bag. Yeah, it's all It's like a silhouette of the city in my hood. Mm -hmm. And it was just basically listening to these songs and it's, this is me, these are my thoughts. Anything you hear, whether you can relate to it or not, mm -hmm. you know someone who's gone through it, or you may even know me personally and you're hearing me vent through my music. So mm -hmm. it, was, it was a personal project, a few personal tracks and a few party tracks, but mm -hmm. that was the vibe we going to and it was 14 tracks. Mm -hmm one or two skits, but uh, it was great. I had features, my boy Geneva on there, my boy mm -hmm. Trouble, DJ Cruz, Scripps. So, mm -hmm. those are just some guys I messed with in my circle, and uh, they all got talent, man. Exactly. Talent. Yeah, I've heard that project, you know, many times before, and, you know, definitely put some blood, some tears in that. So, Appreciate you got me looking forward to the next Appreciate project, most Appreciate definitely. No name yet, but we're working on it. All right, all right. <laughs> now, speaking of which, uh, I want to talk about your, your writing process. Like, what is it like? I mean, do you are you do you take the more traditionalist route as being you know, writing a notepad, or do you take you know the the two K route, which is you know typing in the BlackBerry and in the iPhone, and or or do you you know pull a J and pull everyone else who wants to copy you and do it off the top of your head? Like, I've tried it off the top, yeah. and um, it's tough. Yeah, no it's kidding. Tough. I'm not gonna lie. 
um, from from growing up, I never had a cell phone when I was in high school and all that. I mean, yeah. It's not in grade nine, so everything was written just traditionally, mm -hmm. and I've kept that as I've grown up. I go in the studio, man's like, your dog, that's a that's a that's a pad. Yeah, of course, I can't have a pad, but some man's are all blackberry now. Yeah. Type, you know? So for the most part, it is still pad. I keep it traditional. Mm -hmm. um, if it's just a quick hook or a bridge or something, I just gotta put down short. Yeah, I'll type it in my yeah. phone and just just hold it up. But if I'm writing like a verse, like a twenty six forty eight. Then I'll write it up. And more times you write it up and reading it over, you're going to memorize it anyway. So you don't even need the pad. Exactly. But uh, that's, that's how I do it. Yeah, now correct me if I'm wrong, but like, you know, I feel like whenever a rapper say, yo, you know, I don't write down shit, you know, it's all in my head, whatever, <laughs> it literally sounds like it just came from their head because it wasn't rehearsed properly. It doesn't sound fresh. It sounds like they're thinking about what they're going to say next. True. I mean, like, it's all about your performance. It's all, it's all about your performance. Uh, speaking of performance, you know, what type of performance do you like to give? Like, are you kind of like laid back when you're on stage or is that when like the, the energy comes out? I would say the energy comes out in my lyrics and I'm the type of artist I like to interact with the crowd just to know they're feeling. You yeah. understand, they're, they're listening, they're moving, but are you feeling, are you listening to what I'm saying? No, so I do my little call back, make sure they're still following because people lose, lose focus easily, right? So yeah. I just, but that, that's the type of artist I am, but more or less I interact with the crowd to get them going. Uh-huh, definitely. Now we're about to get into uh, one of your tracks right now. It's called uh, One Way Ticket. Mm -hmm. <laughs> featuring Geneva, okay. you know we played it on the radio a couple times, but uh, it's yeah. it's a proper track, man. So uh, video's nice too. Yeah, sure, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Actually, I was about to ask that. Uh, what was the uh, inspiration behind the the video? Uh, it was the inspiration around the song. The song says it for itself. Just I want to get out, get out of here, mm -hmm. just just leave. So I hit up my boy Zane from um, Ill Minds Media. Shout out to Ill Minds Media, crazy director. We just got together, mm -hmm. put together a crazy plan, wicked treatment, and we were just like, you know, my managers too. We said, like, you know what? Let's, let's, let's do something that's never been done. Yeah. I can't say from an upcoming Toronto artist, I've seen them in a plane, flying around the city, flying around the city. Yeah, I've never seen that. So I was like, let's do it. Only time I saw that was when Jake uh, did start from the bottom. Exactly. So technically, you did that shit first. <laughs> <laughs> Just put it out shut, there. Shut, shut. <laughs> Bless, bless. Uh, well, that, was, that was basically the video and it turned out well and got some great feedback from it. So. As well it should. We're about to get into that right now. Plus we got some more uh, fun stuff on the way so you're definitely going to want to stick around for that. Yeah. So keep it locked. This is Cool Radio. This is Shaka featuring Dene Geneva with One Week Ticket. You already know. Yeah. Attitude raw. You want to know what makes me different from y'all. I have seen things that you never seen before. I kill for my fam even if I got a war.